Hi! I don't have a microphone, so I'm just going to use uh, these sunglasses. They're from ASOS. They're really nice. Bonjour, hi. My name is Aben. I am 20 years old. I'm so out of breath. I just ate three spring rolls. Um, oh my god. Whew. Oh, I am a law student, but I am very interested in the entertainment industry, mainly the fashion and the music industry. Fashion month is over for the fall winter collection of 2023. And I had a little concerns. I have this page blank because I might pop up some pictures here and there. I've been seeing some stuff and I was like, huh, has the fashion industry hit a plateau? Okay, so I have a couple of points on my phone, so I'm gonna look. I I just put the points. I didn't even elaborate the points. I'm just going to freestyle, you know what I mean? Okay. The first thing that I wrote was models now are not like the models back then. And that's a discussion I've heard so much on social media. I only have Instagram and YouTube as my main social media. People are very judgmental of the models walk <laughs> and it's so crazy. As a lot of people say, and I do agree with them, Bella Hadid has an amazing walk. I am wow. Kendall Jenner, people really don't like her walk. And to be honest, I don't hate it. I really don't. Because here's the thing, and I've worked in alongside models. I'm not a model. I'm not a model. I'm five foot five, five foot six, and yeah, I'm not a model. But I from working with them, you're just a human, like a human. Centre, a centre. I don't know. Okay, Google. How do you say centre in French? In French, that's triste. No. Okay, Google. Comment on dit centre en anglais? Hanger. How to say belt in English? Centre. Hanger. Hanger. Let's go. Bye. Okay, done. Drop by. Okay, you can stop, Google. She's like she's still awake. Stop. Okay, Google. Stop, Google. Arrête. Stop. All right. If you ever want to use this again, just say, "Be my French interpreter." That was so chaotic. I am so sorry. I should probably do a video of, on AI because that is also concerning. Okay. The role of a model is just to be a, she's just a human hanger, okay? When you see a model on the runway, you're meant to look at the clothes and how they are moving, right? Yeah, so the the point of models now are not like the models of back then. And they're mainly talking about the 90s with Naomi Campbell and Shalom Harlow. You have to keep in mind that brands ask specifically models to walk a certain way so you can't all be giddy up when the vibe of the runway is sad and dark. Do I wish it was a little bit more like the oops sorry I hurt you boom 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 you know I do miss that you know like a little drama on the runway yeah that would be fun um the last shows that I've seen that had like a little bit like more dynamics was the Mugler. People should re really focus on all about the clothes and not the models. Obviously, there are other projects where models can showcase more of their personalities. But when it comes to the runway, the focus is mainly on the clothes. Imagine you're a designer, you've worked for months on your collection. And what people are only talking about is which model had the best walk. It would really suck. You know what I mean? But... On my Instagram, it's always, who has the best walk? Is it Bella? Is it Gigi? Is it this person? Is it that person? And, you know, sometimes I like to see what people are fighting. Like, I, I like to see the comment section and see people argue about who has the best walk. But, you know what, like, it's not that important, right? And I saw this model, I, I forgot what, which model said it, but she said that it took her three years before having the confidence to walk on the runway. Oh, I have one. Lila Mas. People do not like her walk. And again, she just started. She is, she's a baby model, okay? And I know, you know, it's people like, she's an epic kid and she can't walk. <laughs> Guys, like I said, like the model said, it took her three years. It might take Lila three months. It could take her five years. It could take her ten years. 
we just have to be patient i do see that she has um oh my god the birds here jesus christ damn the birds no not the birds oh i do i did see that um lila has improved her walk a lot so like i said it's it's okay we'll see second point is influencers at fashion shows now tell me why i was watching tamara's youtube video she did a like she did a 45 minute 50 minute youtube video about like what it's like going to fashion week 99 and she said something about there was this journalist this journalist proceeded to say that the influencers invited to the gucci show this month were all just like clowns na -na 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 -na. okay that is not nice first of all these birds are so arrogant Ugh. i'm not trying to argue with you let me do my stuff in peace please ah perfect okay okay on to this pop um maybe they were dressing like class on purpose what do you have what's going on with that right um i feel like the previous generations that were really in the fashion industry are a bit sad that they are not at the front center this is how are basically the future of the fashion industry and it makes sense that they are invited to fashion show to fashion events i am not mad with that what i do have a problem is the type of influencers they invite to the fashion shows and i'm not saying i'm not saying that you have to fit a certain image to be part of those fashion shows but then again it just shows that some brands are really much about let's just get the people with the most followers or let's get the people with the most engagement it doesn't matter if they don't really know shit about fashion or they're not that interested or they just oh i saw i remember seeing this video somewhere someone said there's a difference between liking fashion and liking to wear clothes you know what i mean so i feel i from what i see sometimes with fashion brands they invite people who like to dress like who like to dress well they don't necessarily like fashion but they like to dress well influencers do have their place in the fashion industry i don't think it's the same journalist who wrote the article but there was this tweet about so i say oh the same it's still it's still concerning the gucci show but uh someone tweeted influencers have their own pit at the F gucci show as they fucking should i don't know understand and the fact i feel the fact that the influencers pit was at the center of the the room shows just shows how important influencers are in the fashion industry someone replied to that tweet saying you were one you were the future of the industry once and the person did not lie and who knows what's coming after the influencers robots i don't know i do think paris and milan are very selective as for the influencers that they choose to invite whereas london and new york they're just i think they're open like too open to anyone which is good in a sense right is it i don't know if someone has a specific style i wouldn't want to like i don't know let's say you're a die hard emo kid like all you wear is like the emo style right if chanel is in, chanel or celine is inviting you to a show do you see the disconnect the third point Coupani, <sighs> i did not like that show it's so weird because from the people that were invited like oh wow that's so interesting i love it i love it i love it I feel like when you're invited to a sh to an event i have this pressure of saying that you actually enjoyed it but sometimes you don't always have a, a good time if you didn't see the Coupani show last collect the last collection they did the spray on dress on bella did and this collection they did robots someone said all of this just for a zara dress guys and it just shows that it's really gimmicks. It's really social media heavy. Who's gonna get the most views? Who's gonna get the most like? I don't know if it was for Copenhagen or for New York. This set, this collection. But example of this girl, she was sitting at the table, and then she got up, and when she left, the nap was actually attached to the was like the the part of the dress. So all the stuff that were on the table just fell, which the fuck. And the second 
example is at the Mugler show, it was, I don't know, it was just a model just fighting with one of the guests for a bag. And it's just, you know, it's very just from social media. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, with especially with the Copernic show, I felt like the robots were a distraction for the the clothes. Sometimes fashion brands really do not care about creativity. It kind of goes in hand with my next point, which is fashion houses and their big business like big companies like LVMH and carrying a independent fashion house a fashion brand has more control of the creativity of course they want to make sales and be successful but they have more freedom as to what they can do with their creativity which is really nice that whereas the fashion houses under the big businesses are very business heavy so it's really about making the most money and if a viral moment on social media can help Who's the sales they're gonna do it here's the thing on a legal perspective having a having a big company protect you is very like you feel secure right if something goes wrong you have those big company like yeah we can deal with this nah, 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 nah. but where is the balance like, where is the limit for your creativity but also like if in case of legal issues and business stuff you know Let's say you're a fashion brand and let's say, I don't say LVMH, but like a big company wants to buy buy your your house. You could do a, like a 60-40% right? So you still have control for example of your creativity and what you have and they can deal with anything with legal and business side. So I don't know, do, does it always have to be just buy the entirety of the, hmm, do you know what I mean? Talk about this with my law professors. So my next point is creativity and possibly making less shows per year. Like I said, the fashion houses under the big businesses are very business focused. It's all about the money. It's all about the money, money, money. We don't need your money, money, money. Or actually, they do need your money, money, money. I have to put it here. But it was showing how fashion brands have expanded. Any fashion brand started somewhere. But now, they ex have expanded to like women's wear, men's wear, Homeware, sportswear, home, like anything. And it's, they probably started with two shows per year, fall, winter, and spring, summer. But now it's it's fall, winter, spring, summer, menswear, winter, menswear, some, spring, summer, cruise. And then they might have like a haute couture and they have sometimes um, like brides or bikini. Went from two shows per year to eight, ten shows per year, which is Say, let's say men's wear, haute couture, and women's wear. That's already three. And then three times two, six. And let's say you had a cruise, that's seven. Oh, damn. And then the brides, eight. Holy shit. It shows in a year. It's not, it doesn't take a month. It takes months per roll. You know? You have that many shows. Obviously, you always have to like be fast paced, fast paced, fast paced, and your creativity is limited. If you had, let's say, if you only had one show per year, you had the entire, you had three hundred sixty-five days to actually go beyond, literally expand your creativity, challenge it. I would prefer having one or two shows per year. Obviously, there are fashion houses that stick to one or two collections per year, and. For example, women's wear and men's wear, usually the fashion brand would appoint two different creative directors, but it's still a lot of collection for one year for just one brand. From an envir environmental point of view, if you have less shows, it also slows down the, um, the fashion industry because everything, there's micro trend after micro trend after micro micro trend. I feel like every micro trend is the last two days max. Do we really need eight shows per season? And also, you have to think about it. All the fashion shows, it's like all grand and stuff like that. And the people, the guests that you have, they're not necessarily all from Paris or London or New York. They, they have to fly those people in. And then you can say, well, it creates jobs. It creates opportunities for people. So, see, this is all part of the discussion. There's arguments or counter arguments. It's very complicated. Uh, my next point is, are we focusing on the wrong things? I don't think that's the thing there's it's good to be talking about all aspects of the fashion industry like it's that's the thing about fashion it's so broad 
we can talk about literally anything we can talk about the texture we can talk about uh the models and we can talk about uh the financial aspect the legal aspect it's so 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 broad and vast so i don't know why i said that i don't i i don't know why i wrote that but i don't think we're focusing on the wrong things now well i saw this tiktok i, I don't know if i'll be I'll be able to find it again but it was about oh fashion shows now Boo. fashion show back then like the 90s 80s yeah but what was funny is because <laughs> it's because the pictures they showed for the fashion shows now were ready to wear and the shows that they showed that they were the pictures that they were showing for the fashion show back then were from haute couture the haute couture collection people don't really know they feel like they know everything about fashion but you have to be careful with what you say because ready to wear is very 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 different from haute couture the haute couture the principle is really you know like it says a high fashion it's really the like like putting on a show this for our, you know the celebrities are meant to wear them on the red carpet or um you know like it's like really like dramatic what people are mainly know mainly know about are the ready to wear which is ready to wear is really for the people to like we we watch the show and then we expect to find them on the website or the source in store i don't think all pieces are found in store but usually the intent is to you can buy them after and haute couture one of the great examples is the scaparé show the haute couture show not the ready to wear but we all seen it it's like the big lion head on the, the dresses you would not wear that on the street i don't think i would see people wearing that on the streets because it's not meant to be worn on the streets you know what i mean you know for a red carpet or for a photo shoot you know for the, yeah for fashion covers so maybe yeah um sometimes it's not that we're focusing on the wrong things but sometimes we're mixing stuff up because we feel like we're experts i'm not an expert look at me i am i am far from being an expert if you really want to know experts in the fashion industry you have Blizz Foster, you have Loïc Prigent, you have Luke from Haute Le Mode. These people know what they're talking about. I'm just an amatrice. Can we say the fashion industry is really plateauing when it is cyclical? Here's the thing. Well, I saw it in class, but it was like a fashion triangle. And we had haute couture, ready to wear, and then mass production. So like, you know, fast fashion, Zaha, H&M, Shein. I feel like if the, if the higher fashion, like the higher fashion industry were to slow down their shows and their collections it would have a trickle down effect and you that's why i think this is why i think we should slow down the fashion. but i was i i did tell my law professor about this and i said something about i don't think it's really it can it can't be really a pyramid it, i i feel it's more like a, a circle and i remember i think i don't know if it was months or years ago but i don't have the notion of time and it was just about um, it was Hilly Bieber with us. She she uh, had this lipstick on, and the fashion was were like, oh my god, Hilly Bieber started this new trend with lip gloss, and people were mad because like no like brown girls have been doing this for years and they had no they have never been credited and nah, 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 nah. and it made me think, it made me think. Fashion industry always it's a circle okay because I feel like it can start at any point really, so I would say usually how it starts is. A small group of people, a small group of individuals, marginal groups mainly, that start something. And then a celebrity, I don't know which way you want the circle to go, but okay, then there's a celebrity who saw, who sees the, this like new trend, like this trend from this little group, and tries them themselves. And then everyone's like, wait, this celebrity's doing this. That is so cool. So then from the celebrity, usually it would be, mm, I would say celebrity slash the fashion like the high fashion brands that do this because it could be like directly a fashion brand that says oh here's how you can do it right and from there it's the fast fashion companies that like we're producing shit ton of products because like it's in right now the celebrity has said has announced this new strand and then it's delivered to the mass consumption so everyone else is just like participating on that trend and then you know and then it's just dies down but maybe from this mass population there's a there's a tiny group within that mass person just like oh we should try this instead and then it just does that circling effect so 
I don't think there's such thing as about plateauing. I would say there's there are ups and downs within the fashion industry. So right now, like I said, I, I'm not really happy with... I'm, I'm not saying happy, but I, I'm just not very satisfied with what I saw. Um, this collection. I really like the menswear collections and the haute couture collections. That's why I like this. Yeah, I don't know. I, I wasn't that much of a fan. I'm not saying they were all ugly. No, it's just there was nothing that really stuck in my mind. I don't know. In conclusion, I so from afar, you could see, oh wait, that's a circle. But if you come really, really close, it's, it's just like a... I'll just show pictures because I can explain. I, I really don't think you understood what I just said. Um, my last point is, who has the power to change the fashion industry? First of all, the small independent artists that could help slowing down the fashion the fashion cycle because I like I said because it's more about the creativity they don't necessarily have to showcase something by a certain date they, I mean there are multiple fashion houses that um, showcase their work outside of the fashion month calendar so they could do it this Thursday and we would be like oh okay great the fashion calendar I think is just to make it easier for everyone <laughs> yeah we as consumers me you my neighbor your mom, any of us, right? The society and the fashion industry are inter interdependent. Yeah, in the sense of, in thirty like thirty years ago, you wouldn't think of if if you heard I don't know a brand saying that they killed animals for fur. I mean, in, they they would still protest, right? But it it wasn't as people used to buy this stuff, right? Or if something is not vegan friendly. Or like animal cruelty like cruelty free 30 years ago we were probably like oh well oh well we're still gonna buy it but now we really we i say we as consumers nowadays we are being more thoughtful about our purchases and we want to buy products from brands that reflect our values from our personal identity so sexuality religion to the human rights to the environment and as a result, brands have to be transparent and show their ethics. And from there, consumers can see if whatever the brands are showing, if it reflects their personal value. It's up to you if you want to buy it, if you don't want to buy a product. But that just shows how much power we have, right? And also, another point when it comes to models and like also it comes also with transparency but inclusivity we know 30 years ago there would probably be one black model one asian model and 30 white models but now we are if we see that there's a campaign and there are no uh, plus size models or there's no black models or there's no we are not interested and as a result the fashion houses the have to have to play it with that role there has been a lot of improvement, but there's still so much work to be done. For example, when it comes to black models, brands usually take one light skin model and one dark skin model, and they think that this showcases the diversity. But there's so much range when it comes to black women, just black people in general. And same thing with, with models with an handicap. They think just choosing one model with on a wheelchair is enough but there's just so much more and yeah fashion well i mean it also comes with modeling agencies but also the fashion brands so yeah still a lot of work to be done. influencers also have a a huge impact i feel the perfect example is lena situation i love her content and she so she's a french influencer and when it comes fashion month, she explains the shit out of the fashion. Cause if I don't know, if it was Kylie Jenner, she would just post the pictures of the fashion show. Woo, nice. But you're not you're not really having insight. Lena is gonna come with you the with the research. She's gonna say, so usually if you don't know, so hi, if you don't understand the fashion industry, here is the calendar. This is what happens, and then yeah, the role and then, and then for each show that she's going, she, that she's being invited to, she tells a little bit of the story or like, so this is for this. Oh, this is the theme for this. Uh, you're actually invested. I'm not saying that all influencers do that, but again, it's like what I said with 
it depends on what type of like what kind of influencers do the fashion brands invite yeah what does the fashion industry have for us in the future you know what i admit i saw the other day a video of police officer saying that um the fashion industry should um explore more masculinity um the, like the concept of fashion in them with menswear because um and he gave a person a perfect example with shoulder pads like shoulders um in women's wear you've seen so many and uh, like you've seen so many creative with just shoulder pads you have seen like extravagant shoulders or like very slim or really like really long so you, with femininity we are really playing with the clothes whereas with men's wear and i do really like men's wear i don't know why it's just not as advanced i don't know if it's like if there's a certain image with ma like men's wear and masculinity and this whole thing but i really hope that if it's not this year maybe next year i really hope that we get to explore more and um we get to explore more masculine um, not masculine more creativity in the men's wear and because since Pharrell Williams has been appointed creative director of Louis Vuitton Men, I think he can really push this creativity um, in the menswear collections. So I'm excited to see that. And then what else? Um, there's this video of Vogue and Lina Situation have this little series on their YouTube channel called Vlog, like Vogue but like a vlog. That's been literally genius. And the latest episode that I saw was about tech, and it's just incredible, really. I, you should just check that um, that video. It's in French, but they must have the subtitles in English, and it's very, very, very cool. Um, some people actually just they are really using engineering and like tech into their fashion stuff so like actually in implementing lights you can also talk again with the Coupernic dress the spray on dress the texture the just the tech aspect that I'm really excited to see um, but it doesn't have necessarily have to be with the or even like um, the metaverse and like avatar like you know I you know, we've seen it with uh, fake not fake models but f computer generated models um, and it doesn't have to be with the, mo the with the clothes themselves, but the environment. So if you see, were to, uh, see it's like those physical but also um, digital shows that are really interesting. Um, again, the the thing that I'm scared about is because AI is not that well regulated yet. We can't. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, but yeah. So I hope you really like this video and I don't know if I'm going to make another video. I'm, I'm really like committed to this sunglasses microphone even though it doesn't make any sound. <laughs> I hope you like this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!